Welcome to Kinesiology 771, Research Methods in Kinesiology. This is our first lecture. This is the introduction to research part one. Uh, just some info for you. If you've not already listened to the uh, welcome announcements about the class that are in the class, uh, that go over the syllabus in the class, uh, please do that before you start listening to this lecture. It will be helpful if you do that. Uh, each week I'll have various uh, lectures to provide overviews of the material in a textbook. And I could go over every single detail in the, from the textbook. But I'll try to hit the highlights, some important information. Um, but you are still responsible for reading the textbook and understanding the material as much as you possibly can. So for this uh, particular lecture... The objectives are simple. I want to define research and why in the world do we even conduct research in the first place? Why do we have a research methods course in our graduate program? Then I'm going to describe some of the skills that are required to conduct research. So what is research? What's this stuff all about? Here's some definitions from a couple textbooks and some other places that I've got uh, information uh, about research. Our textbook authors Thomas Nelson and Silverman say that research is simply to determine how things are compared to how they might be. So we want to know how something really is. We think it's a certain way but we have to do research to find out what it really might be, what it really is. Um, Cresswell, which is another research textbook author, uh, wrote in his book that, that research is a process of steps used to collect and analyze information in order to increase our understanding of a topic or an issue. Another definition I've read somewhere, um, it's a diligent search or, in, or inquiry, a study to discover facts. It's a systematic investigation. Another way to look at it is it's a process of, of inquire. It's also been defined as a way to seek truth. And in reality, what research is, it's a way for us to learn something. We all use it. Uh, we all go about conducting research. We may not do it as formally as a scientific researcher or somebody who has been published in a journal article or um, some graduate students who have to do master's thesis or master's research studies or a doctoral student who is conducting a dissertation um, or a college professor who needs to uh, uh, conduct research and get published and all those fun things. But you do it. Uh, you want to learn how to use a, a new gadget what do you do? You investigate, you inquire, you learn how to use the material, to learn how to use the thing. Uh, what steps do you go about doing it? It may not be as formal as what we're going to cover in this class, but you still are a researcher. If you want to learn how to be a better teacher, a better athletic trainer, or a better coach, a better uh, sport administrator, uh, you're going to do some research. What we're going to try to do in this class is to give you uh, the process how to conduct research. What are some of the uh, steps to conduct research? Um, and so that's the main purpose of this class is to introduce you to research, the different methods conducting research. There's some things that we have to know. We have to have some background information. That's where we're going to spend the first half of the class is on some of the, if we'll use a, a body analogy, we're going to start with the bones and then for the first half of the class we'll start with bones then towards the the last half of the class we'll put meat and skin on the bones so we have a nice package of what research and how to conduct research. Uh, kind of already talked some ways why we conduct research but 
I think Cresswell does a really good job of explaining the reasons why we conduct research. Our first and number one reason why is to increase our knowledge. Uh, if we don't conduct research, this is scholarly research and personal research, uh, we will never increase our knowledge. How do we know what our effective teaching uh, methods unless we conduct research to determine what is actually effective? Is um, all of you have probably taken the advanced methods of teaching physical education by now. Um, and Mostyn had his, has his different teaching um, styles. Which one is more effective? Why is it more effective? What are, do those things really make um, the students learn the material better? Do they retain the material better by switching our teaching style? Uh, if we use different learning styles, combined with different teaching styles, do they become, do the students learn the information better? So it's a way for us to increase our knowledge, which leads to improved practice. Hopefully in the long run, the reason why we're doing the research is to become better at what we do, whatever that practice may be. It can be teaching, it can be clinical skills as an athletic trainer, it can be uh, coaching skills, um, anything. It can improve our practice. Hopefully it improves our, improves our practice. The other thing it does for us is that it helps us um, with policy. Now what I mean by this is we're on a in a place in in the economy where we have to justify why we should keep physical education, athletics, and various other things within the schools and in the workplace. We have to be able to justify our existence. Uh, that's policy. You have to use well-informed arguments and use the research to support the reason why uh, you need to keep your job. In the long run, it may boil down to that. Um, you'll use the research to help you support the reasons why physical education is critically important to our children. Why is it critically important at the university level? Why is it, um, athletics important to K through 12? Why should we have high school sports? What's important about that? We have to use research to defend that. We just can't use our opinions. We have to use solid research to support those things. Other reason why we conduct research is to help you as a student, but not only you as a graduate student, but if you're teaching, to help to teach your students in your classroom, in your gym, in your setting, to learn how to have critical thinking skills, to be able to use solid quality research, not Wikipedia, um, as to support uh, your logic and your reasoning skills uh, to make critical decisions about your life and, and your profession. Some skills required, there's probably more than these, but these are just some of them, to could be a good researcher or to uh, conduct good research. Problem solving skills, this is, you have to be a good detective. Um, if you watch or read detective type stories or um, see shows like that where they look for the clues and try to solve a mystery, in some respects, you have to be able to do that to be a good researcher. I don't think that's just with research. I think that has to do with almost any kind of work. Uh, you have to be good problem solvers. And sometimes I say that majority of my job as a program director at the university is to put out fires. What I mean by that is something comes up and I have to solve the problem. And I have to be able to think through the problem and come up with a a way to resolve the problem and sometimes you have to do some detective work you have to find the information you have to get into the library uh, databases and find uh, journal articles about very narrow areas um, big little slivers to the big picture uh, you're not going to get a big chunk a lot of times when you're doing some research you have to look for a small 
areas and then put a big picture together to get the full picture of the information. The other big skill that you need is organizational and time management skills. You have to be able to be organized and correctly use your time um, to be a good researcher. Again, these skills are not just for being a researcher, but I think this is true of almost everything. Uh, you have to spend time in our online databases and doing research in our library, our online library in our case, to be able to um, find quality articles, peer-reviewed journal articles and textbooks to support the information when you're doing your literature review, which we'll talk about in the next podcast in the steps of research. Uh, writing, editing, and more writing is another skill that is required. Uh, any quality research is going to take quite, quite a bit of revisions, and this is true if you're not even if you're turning in the research paper or a research project um, for a journal article, but uh, for this graduate program, when you're doing doing work for a in any of our classes, we you're going to have to write, you're going to have to edit, and you're going to have to do more writing. Um, in this graduate program, students have one of three options for a um, end of the program experience. One is a thesis, one is a research study, or a research project, or a comprehensive exams. Um, most students in this graduate program will do comprehensive exams. I, I support that. I, I took comprehensive exams with my master's program. I didn't do a thesis or I, I didn't do a research study or research project. I didn't do anything like that until I did my PhD. I did a dissertation. Um, I think it's wise for a majority of students in this graduate program to do a comprehensive exam at the end. If student, but still, even with with the comprehensive exams, you have to be able to be a good researcher. You have to have these skills of writing, editing, more writing, all these other skills. Uh, st st uh, statistics. Um, if you're not doing a thesis or a research study or a research project, um, probably not going to have to do statistics, which is good. Uh, we're not going to have to find a stats person for you, but if you are doing a thesis or a research study or a research um, project, uh, you're going to have to know statistics a little bit more than the students who are doing a comprehensive exams uh, because uh, you will have to do statistics. Again, we're going to cover some of that in this class really basic. I can do some basic statistics. Um, hopefully, if you do a, decide to do a research study, well, if you're in an eight-week course, you're not going to be doing a research study or a research project or a thesis. You're going to be doing comprehensive exams. Um, so you won't have to worry about statistics <laughs> other than what we're going to cover in this class um, the next uh, power uh, the next presentation will cover the um, steps in the research process uh, you'll notice that <clears throat> in that presentation I talk about that you will have to do a study or a project you don't have to do it now this is that podcast was done before we made the change in the program so just disregard some of those remarks uh, you'll probably be doing the comprehensive exam at the end of the program if you have any questions about all that stuff please send me an email and i'll be happy to talk to you about that <laughs>